Hello, everybody, and welcome to Stoked, the ultimate Star Trek online podcast. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Hey there, J-Man. Hey there. How you doing? Good. And to start the show, we'd like to give a special a recognition and a congratulations for making it this far. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Captain Kirk. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the Shat's birthday. He turns 80 the day this episode comes mm-hmm. out. And Captain Kirk turns negative 212. Mm-hmm, they share the same birthday. They do share the same birthday, so yeah. there you go. <laughs> so, happy early birthday to Captain Kirk, and congratulations to William Shatner. Uh, live long and prosper, sir. All right. I think he already has. Yeah, for sure. That's, <laughs> that's the truth. Uh, let's talk about uh, some news that came out. Probably the big thing that uh, landed over the week was the new engineering report. Mm-hmm. D. Stahl graced us with quite a meaty one. Lots of bits in there for you to chew on, mm-hmm. like a delicious cheese. A burger. huge preamble, including all yeah. sorts of, uh, we'd like to do this, we'd like to do that. We won't be covering that. Let's get into the actual meat of what they have. But you know, he did touch on that preamble was the Rise of Darkness mission they played. Oh, that's which, true. Which inspired us. Uh, so later on in Tactical View, uh, coming up a little bit later in this episode, we're going to review Rise of Darkness mm-hmm. and uh, give you our thoughts on it. But yeah, let's talk about some of these things. Well, anything that just jumped out at you right away? Well, they're planning to to get up to the point where they're going to be doing 10 feature episodes per year. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is one of the things that you that's and I went back five. and forth on whether or not to cover it because it still sounds like something, well, we'd like to do this. No yeah, promises. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it's for sure yet. And it sounds like it's dependent on possibly bringing on more staffing, but those conversations are underway. But it's, so going from five to nine to ten would be double. Well, if be they awesome. If they stick to five missions per ep- uh, series, that's fifty weeks. That's almost a full year. And you know, it's it's great because it's it's Star Trek Online's thing. That's their unique thing, mm-hmm. and it's also perfect. It's perfect for their player base because they're so used to that weekly content. And then it's also just a great community booster. I mean, the game's mm-hmm. always done super, super well. So many it? people have told us that playing those weekly episodes is their new series of Star Trek. Mm-hmm. I mean, and how can you not want that every single week? So it's awesome. Yes. Uh, now, some other things that were brought up in the engineering report was, I, and I, I'm just going to mention this because we don't really know the details behind it, but mm-hmm. there uh, was uh, something to mention about new interior technology. And I don't really know anything about that other than I'm wondering if maybe it's related to the... Uh, toss into your stuff coming up. Well, maybe not even that, but maybe some way to make uh, missions adapt to your individual interiors in some way so that we can finally play some missions on our ship interior instead of having separate maps. A couple other things <laughs> in there that uh, make me smile. One, Jupiter series uniforms. Just saying that's awesome. And then the other thing <laughs> is is a possible revamp or improvement of the sector space and galaxy maps. Yeah. I really, really, <clears throat> really would love to see that done. I th- I think it's a big barrier for new... En- I think the first time you see that, you're like, what the heck am I looking at? Mm-hmm. And it takes quite a while for your brain to totally break it down. And sometimes the way the way you're explained how to get places, it doesn't really translate to what you see on the map. Yeah. Uh, did you see also there was a note in there about getting rid of off-duty and on-duty costumes and just having costume slots? I'm looking forward to that greatly. Yeah, we'd mentioned, I think there was, you know, a new Klingon costume slot or something like that. Something that Klingons Well, they're going they plan are, they're planning to do that with the Klingons because oh, the Klingons are never off duty, that's, right? That's right. That's so they're planning to do it for the Klingons. But it's now they're, they're pl- saying that they're just going to do it for everybody. Like that. So lot. you no longer have an off But do you know what else that means? That means that you can potentially mix and match things like on duty pants with a suit well, yeah. or with a bandolier on it. I would <laughs> actually go the other way like I do here in the shows. I'm business up top and I'm a party down today. Right. <laughs> I leave, I'll leave that one for the live stream. You know, <laughs> they get to know what I'm talking about. Uh, the one last thing that was on there <laughs> that I'm probably the most excited about is they're adding daily crafting quests. More really? stuff to do is always good. And you know what just hit triple recently was a craftable shuttle, so you get daily crafting quests, mm-hmm. and then you release craftable shuttles. Oh, oh, speaking of shuttles, they did mention interiors coming that are sp- um, potentially yes. going to be used for missions. Anything else in that meaty se- uh, engineering report that you... Uh, yeah, we probably missed pages and pages of stuff. So go check out the link in our yeah. show notes because uh, there's probably something in there that gets you excited yeah. even more than it does us. Oh, you know what else gets us excited? Tweet leaks. Oh, we have a theme song now? Well, we do now. <laughs> all uh, of a sudden. <laughs> all right, so this might be a little spoiler-ish. So I'm giving you a few seconds warning to look away, and I'll tell you when to come back. But we saw a screenshot of a toss interior that kind of makes my heart warm. And Do you uh, want to talk much about this, or is it too spoilerific? Uh, let's just, no, know. I'm going to say it. Okay. Uh, because aside from getting a good shot of the bridge, we also saw the green wraparound Kirk uniform. Yeah. That I don't think we'd seen anywhere previously. And it looks like a baller, so that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also saw a, uh, a an example of a toss skirt that's sort of a wraparound skirt, a mm-hmm. little more classy looking I think skirt. they call it a nurse skirt. Like it, it's more like a nurse chapel. All right, you can look back now. You can look back at the screen now. We're done, uh, <laughs> done th- doing something. Uh, something else that was kind of funny if you're monitoring the Twitter feed over the week was that... Uh, 
a theme going on and on, and you gotta you you gotta give Gozer a hug for this. Is people in the forums are like Gozer, this the special task force or this that broken like this, broken like that, and Gozer for a little while is like, guys, they're fine. And or then, he was also saying, I can't really get to them until right. they finish the and, ground and, combat. And that was a thing, but you know what? I, people just kept asking and kept asking, and I almost kind of get the feeling that Gozer's done it sort of on his spare personal time. Mm-hmm. Um, but he went in and he's, he sort of went through some of the special task force stuff and he had a few funny comments and <laughs> kind of admits, okay, there's some things that I think we can look at that we don't have to wait for ground combat. Now, speaking of other tweet leaks, one thing that we saw was a shot of the um, ground combat revamp, though I didn't really glean much from it. And it's not a very high res picture. But it is Stow on a projector. And that's fun. That sounds awesome. <laughs> I would like to play Stow on a projector. So. Yeah, we did get a good high res picture of something that we should we have no right to be excited about. Is Bajoran militia uniforms are apparently coming soon? Now the shot we got was a work in progress, and you know we've given Bajorans a hard time on this show in the past. I wouldn't wear something if it's made on Bajor. It probably smells. So I heard that they were designed by Tellarites, so it's okay to like the uniforms. Mm, well, okay, I, that's probably what they tell you just so they can sell it. <laughs> You know what I mean? They're not even, oh, don't get me started on those. <laughs> now, there is a cool thing, though, that these uh, uniforms will be coming with ranks and insignias that actually progress. So if you're into the whole uh, oh, the whole right. role play side of all the, the Bajoran resistance and all that, first of all, you're weird. But now you can actually have something to wear that's correct. Uh, he said it, not me. Uh, okay. <laughs> Now let's let's talk about something that we got a ton of email, uh, forum posts, and tweets, all kinds of stuff. I don't know if it was just in the last week, but oh, I noticed it in the last week, and I think maybe even before that, other people noticed it. But there was some murmurs of an exploit taking place that maybe people doing PvP could take advantage of, or something like that, where you could almost double stack an item, or maybe mm-hmm. even equip something that you technically shouldn't be able to equip. The two main examples that I heard were being able to equip two or maybe even three shield arrays at the same time. Dude. They're with- by doubling or even tripling your yeah. shield capacity. Oh, oh, that'd be sweet. And regeneration, because both the stats stack. And I the might, other... And, and in fact, even when somebody was saying, I stacked the Aegis shield and the Borg shield. Mm-hmm. And they had both visual sets on their machine. Or yeah. on their- on their ship. Now, the other one that I saw is that uh, I was actually sent a video of a Miranda ship equipping a set of launcher fighter launcher bays that can only be equipped on a Klingon Vokuv. So that makes the Miranda a lot nicer, doesn't it? <laughs> like, how can you blame them a little bit? I can't. Uh, a Miranda launching birds of prey. <laughs> you know, they, I think this one, it, at first it threw them for a loop a little bit to track it down. And mm. one of the things that I noticed is I think it's really key for the uh, bug finders that if you find something in game, report the bug when it's happening, where it's happening. Because I think they do a whole bunch of data capture at that point, mm-hmm. and that really helps them track it down. So like if you find it and then later on do like a forum post or a bug filing later, well, that's good too. But if you actually submit the bug in game at the moment it happens, I think that gets them more data. Yeah, it gives them a whole bunch of data. It downloads the entire zone file, very similar to a demo, and sends yeah. it to them. So this exploit was fixed, uh, I think, at least on Tribble, right? It has already been fixed on Tribble. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a pretty quick turnaround. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I was, we weren't actually sure by the time we covered this if it would be fixed yet, and they'd already. No. So that's it. good news if you haven't heard about that. It'll, yeah. it'll be fixed in the very near future on holiday. And we got uh, more information if you're curious to read the backstory on that in the show notes. Mm-hmm. All right, Jim. Hey man, let's jump into Tactical View. Welcome to Tactical View. This episode, we're reviewing Rise of Darkness, a user-created mission by... Jake 81 NX. I think the NX means he's experimental. Oh, well, his his uh, mission was an experiment. Yes. And uh, to be honest, our our attention was brought to it when Daniel Stahl mentioned it in his engineering report. Yep. So we gathered up the live stream this morning and we played it like we would have a weekly, and we thought we'd share some of our thoughts on it. Now we're not going to go through. You know, sometimes when we do tactical view, we give you a step by step of the entire mission. But we thought instead, because there are so many great moments in this mission that just kind of have to be. Experience. And there's some story stuff that we don't want to spoil because yeah. we want to run through. So we'll just touch on some of our favorite points. I think yeah. the biggest one for me, and I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit okay. here, but the environments that this guy has created out oh. of bits and pieces of other things. He just hacked together a battle bridge at one point. This is a prime he, example of how you can use pre-made sets, but by arranging them right and figuring out the little tricks you can do to put pieces together, mm-hmm. make completely unique experiences. Um, and and his space his space environments were also like this. Yeah. And I want to make a mention, too, that uh, 
I underestimated. I, for some reason, just came in with a presumption that I would just wipe the floor with the space baddies. Mm-hmm. And I Especially had, because the first ones you fight are fighter-sized. Yeah, yeah. But we had a good fight, and it was a challenge. And mm-hmm. I've actually played it twice because I've enjoyed it so much. And it was a challenge both times. Uh, so, yeah, incredible combat system there and great environments. Mm-hmm. Really liked it. Uh, yeah, to kind of nail that combat note home, the, he's made really great use of ship costumes. Oh, That's yeah, how he yeah. made he made certain ships that behave a certain way. I think we kind of determined that it was either Romulans or Remans. We, we but they look completely different. Different skins. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, there was some bold choices that the author chose to make that I think could have turned out poorly, uh, but obviously using knowledge of how to arrange stuff in the foundry, like we noticed there was probably some workarounds like putting sometimes interiors on planets and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But Yeah, pay no up, attention to your mini-map when you're playing yeah, this game. Yeah, pay no attention to the mini-map, but that's just the foundry right now. Yeah. But you end up in at some points in your own ship uh, in areas you've never really seen before. And that's a bold choice to, to try to remake someone's ship for them. Mm-hmm. But it plays great, and the design elements are, are really unique. Like um, that science lab with that with that big uh, colander in the floor. Yeah. I was like, what is that? Is science, was that the sensor array? What is that? Yeah, I've never part seen of, something think, like that. I think he said that that area was astrometrics. Yeah. Have you ever seen anything? No. no. It Very kind of reminded cool. me of the shaft that they threw Emperor Palpatine down, though. Oh, we got to give this away. Oh, yeah. Kind of, <laughs> this, is, this is just a great moment in the mission. I'm sorry I didn't mean to jump on your Star Wars thing, but I remembered it right <laughs> away. No, I, I bet everybody forgives you. <laughs> uh, we get to go into a, like a shuttle bay control room, and you go into this room, and you look down, and there is a damaged shuttle, which you are rescuing, and there is just this great moment where when you peek down below, you look over and you see there's more shuttles back there and there's a little yellow worker guy in, a, in an engineer's outfit mm-hmm. working on the shuttle and you're like, that is such a it's nice like little touch. tucked around the corner and you yeah. can only barely see him if you're standing in the exact right you gotta spot. you got to figure there's a 50-50 chance people are going to see that. Yeah. You know? And it's just a nice little attention to detail. Well, now they will because they watch this, well, right? Yeah. Everybody. Everybody does. Every last person. That's true. <laughs> uh, so uh, one other thing to mention, and this is always an issue, is maybe the ground environments are okay, maybe Maybe the space combat's okay, but how's the story work? Yeah. And the story works. It does work. Um, there is actually a pretty big reveal right at the end. This is a two-parter, and the the uh, Rise of Darkness Part 1 uh, is just the introduction to this quest line. I don't actually know if it's only a two-parter. There will be more story. I think we'll probably check it, it out. It ends right? with a cliffhanger that is very good. Mm-hmm. It introduces many different story elements in such a way... It, the mission was a little long, but it kept its momentum going in it such a way that when you int- are introduced to each new part, you're like, yes. Very clear acts and moments in this episode. Mm-hmm. And, and like you said, it, you know, when, when you, it is long, but it's the momentum c- keeps. Mm-hmm. And when you hit the end, you're like, that's just the right spot to end, but I could, I want more. Yeah. I want more. And that's like, okay, I'm ready to go play the next but one. But I could stand to go take sandwich time and come back to it. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Speaking of sandwich time. Because, you know, we, that's what we call traveling yeah. uh, very frequently. They made a great use of an interior to substitute for traveling. Yes. N- even more than that, there was actually combat going on by your ship while you're on the interior taking care of other business. So you get uh, hails from the bridge telling you what's going on with the combat situation mm-hmm. while you're taking care of business elsewhere. Yeah. It was great. And it, it gave it a very Trek feel because you felt like you were inside your ship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and your uh, boss were featured uh, prominently throughout dialogues, I felt like each one, well, not each one, but I felt like different members of my away team were contributing to the conversations with the NPCs and with me. Mm-hmm. Like they would come up and they would ask the NPCs different questions and stuff. And it, it, it just flowed really well. Uh, you are treated to a bit of set design uh, in, in what is the lounge on this ship. And it, it is, there's a moment when you look out the window and you see there's a comet. Mm-hmm. And this comet was with you the entire time you were doing the space combat. And as you fly up to the ship, the comet's near there. And then once you beam over to the ship and you go into this lounge, you see that comet again, only the side of that hull is completely ripped off because the ship's been heavily damaged. Mm-hmm. It's so well done. There, there are um, bits of that set that I don't actually know how they did. And we had some foundry experts in our chat room while we were playing through it saying, how did he do that? Yeah. <laughs> so well done there. And yeah. again, it felt like an original piece of... Uh, uh, Stowe design. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, I, I don't. I don't know if this makes me sound like a jerk, but I honestly think this mission was probably better than some of the early content the game launched with. I. This is way up to par. Yeah. On probably more than half of the missions that are currently mm-hmm. existing in the game. Yeah. So uh, stay tuned uh, for uh, com- community feedback. But 
Uh, after you get done watching that, you've got to go check out Rise of Darkness. It's a definite recommended. Now, actually, while we're on the subject of the Foundry, we're probably going to take a week off here, but most of you probably know that they're aiming for March 28th to actually move the Foundry. It should be next week when from, we're as we're recording this. Right, so prior to our next episode. So if we did another triple review next week, then the Foundry would be on Holodeck. It wouldn't make much sense. So we're probably going to give it a week off. Mm-hmm. When the Foundry lands on Holodeck, we're going to be trying to do this on a more regular basis. Yeah. But not just that. I think we're going to try to get your call-ins oh, yeah, yeah. live as we play it. Well, why not? I mean, we'll, we'll start in the mornings and we'll play these Foundry missions with you guys live in the chat room. And then we'll right after that, we'll get you on. We've got this Skype video wall that we've used once before. We can get five people on if we want or whatever mm-hmm. and get your opinions live on the air. And we'll record that and we'll work that into a future segment. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, we'll give you more information about that once things hit holodeck and we're ready to do it. Mm-hmm. All right, J-Man, let's jump into community feedback. Welcome to Community Feedback. Now, last week, we asked you guys to send in your inspirations for the Foundry missions uh, when you create those episodes, but we made a little bit of a restriction there. We said, limit it to the Toss universe, if you would. Yes. <clears throat> now. Give us the best moments from Toss history that would, you would like to see inspired in a Foundry mission. We're going to we're gonna pick our favorite three suggestions that came in, and these were either picked on the criteria of there was a few people that suggested it, and so mm-hmm. we kind of were able to lump them together, or ones that really struck us as kind of fancy and so uh, we'll dive into some of those as well. Now, right. the first one, J-Man, came from Nathan S. Mm-hmm. This is reference from the Carbonite Maneuver. Carbonite Maneuver? I don't know. Carb- I don't know. Actually, really early on in the original series, it's season one, episode two, and it's this epic battle where uh, Kirk realizes that he's maybe been playing the wrong game. Mm-hmm. And this is really the point that I think Nathan wrote, and he said, I like the fact that the player could be going along and all of a sudden have this aha moment where they realize maybe they're playing the wrong game all along and they have to shift their tactics. So adapted into a foundry mission, it could be something where you go into uh, maybe a combat situation thinking that all you have to do is stomp the bad guy to win, where all of a sudden you realize that maybe something more is going on. Right. Maybe you have to trick them or bluff a little bit mm-hmm. like Kirk does. Or maybe even the ultimate solution is to avoid combat outright, and you could potentially fail the mission. Jeremy, that's a little bit of wisdom for life you just laid on us there. I like that. Mm-hmm. All right, now the e- more you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, good job, man. <laughs> Ethan wrote in with the uh, next suggestion, and his his was sort of one of those that a lot of people matched up. It was funny because a lot of people wrote in with the following. Now I know. Spock's brain isn't considered the best episode. In fact, some people don't like it very much at all. But dot dot dot, <laughs> you know. And it was funny. What was the other one? We got a lot of a like, piece of the action. A piece of the, the action. gangster one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because yeah, everybody was like, "Well, I know. I know it's not a very good episode, but you got those uniforms, but... you know, with the suits. I mean, that could really make something. So right. that was funny. But we let's go back to Spock's brain. So, yeah. uh, season three, episode six. You've probably heard it because it's considered maybe one of. The original series weakest episodes ever where aliens literally come and they steal spock's brain <gasps> well what uh ethan really liked about this moment is at the end of the episode they they actually have a kind of a funny moment where they throw a little humor in there well they managed to reattach spock's brain yeah they do successfully manage. yeah and then of course there's this nice little banter back and forth between spock mccoy and kirk mm-hmm. i Which knew it was wrong i shouldn't have done it what's that i should have never reconnected his mouth well, we took the risk, Doctor. <laughs> Classic moment there, and he thinks. Uh, I think his main point was is Stowe could just sometimes use a little humor. Yep, it's a pretty serious environment. Why not have a little fun from time to time? Well, we canon. know that there's galactic war everywhere, but sometimes you gotta laugh, right? Yeah, yeah right. Now, okay, our last one that we're gonna feature came in from Mad Dog NX. Now, I'm going to call Mad Dog right out on this because I was under the impression that we said the original series, not the original series universe, and he went and called out to Wrath of Khan. How could you not reference Wrath of Khan? Uh, Yeah, exactly. And and his uh, his point was actually more specifically, um, 
he actually went ahead and took the Wrath of Khan as his inspiration already. He's created a founder mission called the Regula Incident. And he says the Regula Incident takes a modern spin on what happened with all of the Genesis data. What Starfleet's doing with it now. And he said he's he has a, uh, a mission in there you can play that sort of takes off from that point. Mm -hmm. and that's Including, a really interesting way uh, to do it. He's created a character that's the great-granddaughter of Khan. Um, oh, yeah. Miranda that's Singh. That's right. So... Yeah, I love the idea of taking really great moments in Trek history and extending them in Stowe. As long as they're done well, yes, you could do those badly. That's true. But, but we haven't says, played the mission, so who knows whether well, he, he pulled says, it off? <laughs> he says it's gotten some good reviews. All so, right, good. Well, there you go. Yeah. Now, uh, before we wrap up, thank you all for uh, inclu sending those in, and, mm -hmm. and we hope that maybe you out there can enjoy some of those moments and f find inspiration for your future. future and if future your missions. recommendation did not get featured here, that doesn't mean we don't like it. We like Star Trek, so. Come on, make the mission. Yeah. We'll play it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Probably you might even see it in a future episode. Stay tuned for more about that. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, we're going to ask you a community feedback question next week because we've got everything worked up with the Foundry. But before we wrap this episode up, I just want to take a moment and say thank you to those of you who donated a couple of weeks ago. We mm. mentioned that we're making a push to go full time. And uh, the stoked audience was extremely uh, generous. We've, uh, we've been able to cover about 15% of uh, our daily costs or our, our monthly cost for uh you know if we were going to be able to um, afford staff and things like that so that's really good we're closer now we're also talking to potential advertisers and things like that mm -hmm. if you enjoy the programming and you would like to help out go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash donate because we love doing this show and we want to keep making it for you and that's one way to help out is through that Mm -hmm. We'll have other ways you can help out that aren't actually things like donations and stuff like that. In fact, if you want to be involved with all of the efforts on that front, just go head over to Jupiter Colony. There's several different conversations going on there about ways that you might be able to help out without needing to send any money. Yeah. And totally. I know that that's up a lot of people's alleys. Yeah, absolutely. Free is <laughs> good, man. Uh, now, one last thing before we wrap up. If you want to stay tuned on what we are doing, go over to Jupiter or go to Facebook.com <laughs> slash Jupiter Broadcasting. I added a sound effect to the slash. I noticed. Uh, and then you've also got... That was uh, not in post. No, no. I did that with my mouth. <laughs> and then we've also got jblive.tv. We do these shows live at 11 a.m. Pacific over at jblive.tv. And you can and we usually have some chat. sort of gameplay, even if there's not a featured episode. Yep. We did a foundry mission today. Who you knows can holler, what we'll do you can next time? the chat room. You can holler at us while we're doing that. And, uh, you know... Make your, uh, make your little bits of knowledge into the show. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a big recipe and you're one of the ingredients. Something like that. That's gorgeous. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Stoke, and we'll see you right back here next Tuesday. All right, J-Man, let's jump into Tactical View. Love you.